Hello. I'm going to try to talk louder so that everybody can hear me. Guess what day it is? It's April 22nd. I've been here for six months. I've not been traveling. I needed to chill for a minute. <laughs> and you know what? It's been good. I'm going to redo this one. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 21. Duns Gotus was a wise English philosopher of the Middle Ages, but he became mixed up in an early version of an IRS audit. Didn't know this. His tax mistakes. Oh, this is scary. I don't want to hear this. <laughs> His tax mistakes were so stupid that our word dunce memorializes his stupidity. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. General Burnside is remembered today not for his Civil War heroics, but for his bushy whiskers or sideburns. Our popular lunch, the sandwich, is all we recall today about the Earl of Sandwich, who did a lot more than just than put meat between two hunks of bread. But praise God, we remember Jesus the way he was and is. The name of Jesus, which could also be translated Joshua or Jeshua, literally means God who saves. He did, he is, and he will. In Japanese, Jesus sounds like yes. How wonderful, yes, Jesus saves. We see that in neon signs on small roadside churches on roofs right next to Coca-Cola and visit Rock City. But the message is true and completely accurate. Jesus does indeed save. His name is true. When we pray in the name of Jesus or call upon his holy name, we invoke his salvation, his healing power of love. For to know his name is not merely to speak it, but to know him. To know him is to receive him and to connect with health and redemption. When we say yes to life and to recovery, we are meeting the God who saves wherever he may be. Wonderful and mysterious love, I give my life to you. I say yes to you, Lord Jesus, my Savior. Amen. That's on my hand. Do you, do you want me to tell you how this came about? As you may know, I have five kids. And so I therefore had a lot of things to do and remember. And I would be forgetful. And what I would do, like say, if I needed dog food and thought I might forget, or, you know, it wasn't, like, I don't make the whole grocery list, but, you know, say I, I had to, in between going to the grocery store, I had to get dog food because we were almost out. And uh, when I went to pick up the kids or whatever, I had to get dog food, so I would write dog food on on my hand so I wouldn't forget. And um, so that was so, and so, that was somewhat ironic that I got mad at God, but I I couldn't I and I didn't really want to remove it anyways. Um, 
I saw it as part of my life and um, and he drew me back to him <laughs> and I'm thankful and so these past six months my time on the road was fun but um, it also taught me a lot and I was going it sort of stunted or stopped my growth because I was I was learning how better to not let toxic people into my life um, how to better handle situations even though I had got so depressed um, it was actually um, the thing with my my middle my my youngest two because at first they were still trying to remain neutral, but just it just broke me and caused me to hit that rock bottom in 2019 when I wasn't hardly seeing them anymore. Um, when my ex and I first separated, um, I was still living in the house with him and I was still very involved in my youngest two children with their their lives because um, they were still at home <laughs> in um, 2014 um, and uh, so it it's just gradually started to go um, downhill and um, and um, I didn't have good boundaries. And I got to, um, I was really, they were like, just that, you know, I didn't think I would ever lose those relationships. And so that was just devastating, you know. I taught my youngest how to drive and um, and uh, with a car, I got a car, which was good that I got a car. That I got in trouble for doing that too. I got a car because um, the before that, my ex had always picked out my car and um, I had never picked up, I didn't even realize it. Like I didn't even realize like how oppressed I was. I, I didn't even realize it. And so my kids also, I don't think, really realized it either. And I was always just, you know, praising their, being the good little wife. And um, if their dad hurt them or did something, I would always make excuses for him and defend him and all of that. And... Um, but uh, when I taught my youngest to drive and then uh, he got his mom to, to get a new car and, and my youngest got her grandma's car and, and she didn't need me to drive her, she didn't need me to teach her to drive or to drive her around or whatever. And um, she had a debit card and so she was set. <laughs> She was all set. Um, and uh, then the influence from the older siblings. And yeah, so that really led me down to, to my rock bottom. And the good thing about that is that um, I eventually learned <laughs> that I can't. I can't live without him. <laughs> and going from a series of, I went to a lot of meetups. How many meetups did I go to? I went to the one in Oregon. I went to the one in Branson. and I went to the one in Michigan. So I guess that's three. Did I go to any more meetups? No. But <laughs> I'm going to, and actually I wrote some of it already. I'm finishing up a blog post. Um, on my adventures in my RV. And so you will look for that soon. And one day I will post a link below. But um, I can post a link to my blog below. 
my blog is there. That's where the story will be, and I'll put pictures and stuff. Um, but the cool thing is I have a community tab now, and I can put pictures on my community tab too. I'm, I'm trying to make use good use of my community tab and it's fun and I'm really excited about having have got that and if you didn't hear that story that's a great story cuz I was at 495 in December and I it was almost Christmas and I prayed to God that I wanted to get to 500 per Christmas. Christmas was on a Saturday. Glorious on Life on Wheels went live. And um, I said, and I'm a moderator for her, and I said in the chat that I was at 495, and thank you, Carol. <laughs> thank you, God. Uh, I got to 500 on Christmas. So that was my, that was a great Christmas present <laughs> and answer to prayer. And um, my community tab came by New Year's. So that was exciting. So anyways, six months here. Next month, I'm taking off. <laughs> And I'm going to relocate to Denver. And I really like having a home base. I'm glad I had this place to come because I was worn out. And so many things happened. And that will all be in my little story that I'll put on my, my blog post. I'll link my blog below. And uh, yes, can you hear me today? <laughs> can you hear me, you guys? Can everybody hear me? I'm just I'm just recording on my iPhone. And so I hope you could hear all that. Um Yeah, I'm very thankful. It's been good being here, being able to cook and um I've been just you know, watching Joyce Meyer, sitting up here in my room, chilling, um, reading the word. Oh, I had a verse that I found today. Um, it was Psalm 138, verse 7. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect, perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. That's a good verse. Ah. Bye. Love you. <laughs>